everybody. Welcome to Women of the Stars with my beautiful friends here. Um, first, we have, put it back on gallery view. We have, let's see, we'll start with Josh. My Hello, intermittent, everyone. My intermittent <laughs> co-host, Josh, from the CW. And then we have Terry Smith of the Smith and Bailey team. Hey. And Jonathan. Bailey from the Smith the Bailey team. <laughs> Hello, everyone. Much love. And my beautiful friend Alexis Rose from the Ascension Diaries. I'm so excited. Yay. Thanks for having me. You're welcome. Well, I'm not going to call myself a knucklehead or anything, but let's just say this. <laughs> it's been two years. Oh, uh, since 2020 since the beginning of my journey and I hear people talking about the shipping residence but I have no freaking idea I was like is that God's belly button what are we talking about like is it a cave somewhere who's in charge of it I had no idea so I got a chance to talk to Alexis and um, I still don't know the answers I said just tell everybody because I think a lot of us are listening to it hearing about it talking about it but I've never really heard it fully explained and it seems that you've taken the time out of your life to really get the science of it down and I'm gonna remove myself and allow you to just introduce yourself uh, as a woman with credentials and into science and she don't like all these compliments but I just think she's so freaking smart and adorable I'm so happy thank you I am grateful to be here. I want to explain this because I did take a lot of time to learn about it. And then I've had to just gently be in my own, I would say it's more in the mainstream science vein that this information is about. So it's just an expansion of normal uh, earthly mechanics and stuff. So it is something that is a publicly known thing. This is not an esoteric truth, in my opinion. This is actual, just more mechanics about our planet. So the mechanics of our planet in general are also now being argued and there's like two bodies of knowledge that are kind of i would say on the internet more so battling for i would say relevancy and that's sort of the spiritual side where it's like okay where is the real truth here like you're saying is it the belly button of the earth like what really is going on like what is this helpful for and i started studying the schumann resonances when I first learned about them because I saw they were atmospheric electromagnetic frequencies. And so already concerned about the cell phone towers and all the other electromagnetic frequencies that were toxifying in a way our environment, I was also interested to hear that there was planetary frequencies that are always playing also. So there's the earth noise and then there's the planetary noise, which I assumed, assumed there was a planetary noise and just learning the mechanics and the more of the science of how this noise increases in intensity, what times of year it increases in intensity, what causes it to increase in intensity, and what is the effects on our bodies. This is also all stuff you can look on if you even just want to use Google Scholar and do some research about the cardiovascular pressure and the brainwave shifts that happen during these space weather storms or when our atmosphere starts getting more intensified. So it is kind of logical. It is just where is the energy flowing? Where is it charging us and what's causing us to have imbalances? And as I have a background in psychology and therapy, I was here to just be a healer basically. And I was trying to figure out the human words and establishments to be doing my work. And I had to just break free anyways and begin researching group studying these anomalies in the Earth's electromagnetic field or the Schumann resonance charts. And then not just the Schumann resonance charts, but then the solar flare activity. So kind of had to jump to solar flare activity because it was a direct impact, basically. Well, everything the sun was doing, it was charging up our planet, which is, again, a beautiful mechanic, makes sense. And also now I've learned that the other planets as they're rotating around, they create these incredible energy poles and electromagnetic fields. And those crossing and those twisting around as the astrologers more so follow 
when those are all twisting around, it causes the sun to also create storms and release emissions and stuff. So it's not just our planet and the sun, it's all the other planets. And so monitoring the other planets, our planet and the sun is kind of what I've begun doing to get a better idea of what our environmental experience is going to be like every single day. So it's the weather people know to a degree how the atmosphere is going to be disturbed, but everything, all the solar weather, it all causes the rain. It all comes from the outside and makes its way down into our planet. And the lightning coming down all the time is what is causing our own planet to constantly be charged. So I'm just, I'm just basically tracking lightning intensity in a way. And I've learned that the sun and the planets can cause that to change too. So that's been really fun, but it's, I've had to continually expand. And now I also watch other cosmological cycles, like the Pleiadians cluster when it's moving around or when we're, we're facing the galactic center right now, it's Sagittarius season. So we're getting more galactic central electromagnetic frequencies. So there's more stuff that is informing our bodies right now. So I've just begun studying it the best I could and taking all the data and relieving people of their intense anxieties during these storms because it can cause our brain waves to get super flustered, our heart rates, our guts. A lot of children and animals tend to show symptoms first because they're smaller and more sensitive, it seems like. So I always know when a storm's going to be really more intense and I should talk about it more when people start telling me their animals and their kids are having some sort of freak out or issue uh a lot of it has to do with digestional i see it most of the time or headaches and like seizures as well so it's like nervous system disturbance basically so i just try and keep help have people keep their nervous system healthy it seems to be the best way and i teach them about grounding obviously which is a healthy thing for your body and during these storms i just report and i'm there online for whatever questions whatever anyone's freaking out or having an issue with um the solar flares i'm tracking more and more on a spiritual level also because i have abilities as a psychic medium and so when people die or when they're about to be born there's also a lot more of this activity so it just goes hand in hand with my psychic abilities or my i want to say my day job is being a psychic medium and that's where i make that's where i do one-on-one with people But then on a public scale, I do the space weather study and I'm just kind of there as a support during what could be a very intense solar cycle, which we're kind of hitting the peak of in the next few years on 2025, 2026 should be the peak of our current solar cycle, which is like an 11 year cycle that the sun does. So that's what I'm watching. I've been training really studying the sun more and more and understanding it, the differences between all of the signals and the behaviors of the sun. But it's not that complicated after there's only a few things, honestly, that have really stuck. And it's kind of a cascade of events from as above, so below. It all just, it applies there too. So it's been pretty easy. The logic has been following pretty good with the study. I don't have a lot of pushback. I just have a lot of support from people especially people caring for other people who are also showing signs of struggle. The sick, basically the sick and the weak and the innocent are getting the help they need from those of us who can still check our phones and are curious and want to know what our environment is feeding us. It seems to help a lot of people. Girl, I'm gonna tell you, it just feels like we need to have you on every channel. You need to, <laughs> everybody needs to be plugged into this information because yeah, as we're we're like living our lives and wondering, why do I feel this way? Am I sick? Is yeah. something wrong with me? And you know, we're if we're running around and don't have any idea about the pressures and the storms and how it affects our body we can feel in limbo and start to feel hopeless. Yeah. You know, and a lot of people when they're in the bed and they're all like worn out and they're not really able to understand it. I've heard 
oh, well, the Schumann Resonance is doing this today. And it's like, oh, thank you, God. I thought I was a loser. Oh, God, I just didn't know what was happening. And, and people get such a sense of relief from just knowing, like, please, that there's an answer to my problem. Um, so is this also something that if someone is already ill, like, just naturally ill, not necessarily from the resonance, but is it something that can actually predict death in a way? Because it can affect certain people with certain illnesses and problems that we would know, you know, like if we knew over the summer, it's going to get 106 degrees. Usually they will tell you, be careful with the elderly because drink more water. It's a heat cat five. And, you know, if you're dehydrated, this will not be a good time for you. So is this also something you could do? Well, yeah. And wherever the sun is pointing on our planet, I watch what it, what's actually happening on the surface. And sometimes there's some really intense stuff going on. So it's just shining on. And then it's summertime in Texas. So it's just all this crazy electromagnetic energy just shooting at Texas during the day or whatever. And it does cause issues, but it's, it's like x-ray flashes and, and cosmic radiation that can also gamma radiation that can just shoot out of the sun during the noon hour, which is why a lot of animals also sleep and they hide during that direct impact of the sun because it's a little bit too intense. So a lot of us, our whole culture, some cultures still do nap during that time, <laughs> take a break, and then they come back, they take a lunch break or whatever, and where everybody takes a takes a chill pill, but the mm, like day break, so to say, day break. It's no, that's something be, different, maybe. <laughs> it seems to be something we're naturally pretty like we've already kind of fallen into that rhythm because it is we are quite close to the sun. We are in its corona mm. still. So everything that happens on the surface is basically happening at real time to us because we're just we're in the soup of our sun still it's still just like engulfs us basically if the science that i've read about it so yeah we can predict death because a lot of people with nervous system issues but they will rapidly begin to show decline i've noticed before their nervous system will kind of snap so like if you're having seizures or for example the seizures will begin to pile up on each other and that's usually a sign obviously when you're a normal doctor whatever but you can predict when more people are going to get seizures by watching the sun and watching the sunspots and when we're going to be zapped with way more intensity or if it's nice and calm like a glassy ocean sometimes it looks really calm and we're all fine on earth and everybody's cool and then sometimes it's just a mess and I'm getting you know there's people People are dying, but also then I see a lot of bursts. A lot the sun also gives off a lot of a lot of juice and a lot of particles, and you watch it. And these particles and so on, these waves of energy also bring life and they bring new nu nutrients and stuff. Like it, it's it's continually giving life to the solar system. So when one person is like riding the solar flare out of their body, another person is being born. It's, it seems to be even a travel technique of the souls is to come right out of the sun or ride that wave out of the earth with the sun. So it's, it's kind of beautiful. I, I am starting to get how simple it can be. The movement of energy and our transference of energy out of our bodies and so on. It's very, uh, it makes me think of the neurons in a brain. And how the signal kind of transfers through your brain. Very similar visual. And I know when you zoom out and look at all the galaxies and the nebulas, it looks very similar. The same sort of interconnectivity. Wow. So there were, so the sun spots. Yeah. And the solar, solar and th that makes the solar flares. So yeah. the solar flares... I, and then, then you said at one point, what brings the nutrients? What's the safe, positive effect? Like, are solar flares also having positive and negative effects or 
or is that another aspect creating the positive effect of the nutrients, like you said, that we were getting? I, I do think it's a positive negative thing. It's, it is. It's a multidimensional flash. Like it, right. they, can, they can barely measure a solar flare because it just shines out at this and it's magnetic, even the light. So it's just all of the light. And so it's just pure information, a pure stoke could be like pure source energy potentially right so can't be that can't be all bad <laughs> <laughs> so in in your um presentation are you going to get into the cycles the solar cycle we yeah can talk, we can talk about that briefly the the most popular science about the sun is that it goes through an 11 year cycle right and during year five or six it's the most intense activity wise and it calms down and we start a new cycle <laughs> and they're, they've done 25 of them now since the study has begun basically. So that we're on number 25, they say, and now I'm hearing, Oh, solar cycle 26 is going to be the real intense one. And it just seems like they keep postponing this intensity or this, even this spiritual awakening, this enough solar flares to finally right. wake up the masses who knows it might stimulate enough neurons in the brains of our people that one day finally that they'll let go of some density or some doubt they'll make a new idea connection it'll be a forever changed and i watched it happen with the solar flares on a small level it's like microsurgery but the the prophecies about like the whole sun just <laughs> emitting this huge all-encompassing blast it just seems kind of unnecessary with the behavior i've watched how the sun manages itself so i i can go into that but i would say the sun is funny it seems simpler <laughs> i think it's much simpler than science allows a lot of this is right so i did hear about that i did hear about the 11 year cycle and in the middle of it the sixth year is like the most intense and then I guess for us, the sixth year is in 2025. That's what you just said, right? I think in, so. In 2025. So it's supposed to be so intense. And um, that at that point, I guess the thing about the solar cycles is people really do believe uh, huge changes, evolutionary changes happen to us physically, but that over time it's been measured. If you look at the events, like major events in the world, um, which I don't have any of them named. I guess we could list some in the chat, but that if you start to look at it, you see huge advances in humankind every 11 years during this cycle, right? Supposedly, that'd be great. That'd be great. That was, that's, that's what it says, you know. Perfect. <laughs> but if, yeah, if we could just get some more use of this brains that we have right now. That would be, it would be awesome. So I think people are just, <laughs> they're hoping like, oh, I got my fingers crossed. Everybody get smart. <laughs> yeah, I was getting, I was just reading something about how when the manipulative races want to try and coerce a stupider race, they'll give them intelligence technology and be like, this is the only way to be smart instead of the natural process of just maturing as a race and not jumping the gun with technology because it's just a co it's just a manipulation process for the most part and like a trade a trade and barter sort of shystering that that i don't know it just seems to be a common pattern but i'm noticing that we're in that time a lot right now too huh. is that they're offering they're going to be offering another level of technological intelligent advancement to make you smarter but naturally, with the sun, we may just, whoo, we will be able to perform way beyond. And I think that's kind of the direction that we're going. It's like, we're actually trying to take advantage of this 2025 that's coming, that's coming up, up as a spiritual jump for our planet. So in a benevolent way, I feel that's why I have this focus. And it may just try and get flipped another direction, as we've seen, like the push and pull. But I really think the momentum of the sun is a benevolent momentum. So as it picks up momentum, so will the, I think those who are angelic and who want to be good and do good things. So I'm excited. People are waking up a ton. People are very proud of their post 2020 
experience and how hard it was and then how, where they're coming now and what they're going to be building with that confidence now in the next few years could have its huge, like unveiling and global takeover in 2025. Like we were replacing rapidly all of these systems, all of the hospitals and all the schools, a huge one, which is amazing. That was the biggest issue. I had no idea how that we were going to tackle that. So, so, pe- <laughs> so globally. And now people are taking their kids out of school and they're no longer working with the medical, the Western medical system. They're diversifying, they're mutating, they're yeah. expanding, they're collaborating, they're becoming more human, more in tap with nature, more tap in with each other. <laughs> I know who knew that. Yeah. You telling people that they need to stay home, all of a sudden people started jogging and walking and they were like, you can't keep me inside. They were like, I've been wanting to do this. It it was like a huge excuse to go do the things that you hadn't been able to do because you've been trapped. And and I'm just going to say this because before I medically retired, I was watching my coworkers turn green basically because we were trapped in this huge building with fluorescent lights and eating pretty much garbage. Part of my process was I knew that I wasn't building any new brain cells and my brain was suffocating because of the garbage we were eating. I was on medication. So that was, you know, stagnating my blood, filling it filled with magnets and such. And then I, so then I was like, high as hell on pain medicine at work, but then also taking drinking like two monster drinks a day to stay awake and so I'd be like really hyper and real cheerful and people were like she must be doing great and it's like no I'm half dead actually (laughs) thanks for asking and um I just remember like going home and sleeping all day and then you know all night and waking up in time to tell my son like hey go to bed and then I'll go back to sleep (laughs) I was I was done I was done I would exhausted and had nothing and if it wasn't for these two things and uh I got sent home from school early and then in 2020 I was like oh yeah look everybody else gets to come home too come on you know if somebody gets that though if somebody if somebody is in a position to be able to stay home and be home and then how do you get kids to go back to school after that no way in hell my son was going back to school. It was, it was just like, it was, like we're done. But um, I chatted a lot. Uh, Josh, did you have any thoughts before she got started? Like anything that you would like to make sure that it's covered or? No, she, um, <clears throat> she covered um, a lot of it. Um, I'm curious. Um, we know how the electromagnetism affects our body. I'm just curious uh, as far as like talk about, you know, the heart brain coherence and i'm just curious if you got any or come across anything in that relation from that type of system in regards to our solar system maybe the relationship between sun and earth kind of like a heart brain connection coherence so i'm just gonna ask them what their thoughts are before you get started to make sure that you cover it i I, I don't know is that something you're gonna talk about the heart brain no we can talk about it really quick okay Go ahead. Yes. Sure. The heart brain coherence is a big part of it. It's a direction I noticed that the, a lot of these studies took when they were studying the Schumann resonance. So it's beginning to measure the heart brain coherence as well and being able to just basically master your own brain waves and your heart at the best you can, despite the electromagnetic outside environment. And when it comes to the sun and the earth, I would say potentially the sun is in a way acting like the crown chakra of our of our solar system because it leads and it's head first and our planet could be more of like a heart chakra in our solar system where there is this whole library of people and stuff going on it's the third planet in so it could work this bluish higher heart higher it is a blue and green planet so it does kind of match and then Further down, going out into Mars is sort of the energy we're integrating, which is uh, the solar plexus or the ego or the service to self sort of energy or the the intensity of the 
the personality not being destroyed when entering the collective or the community there's this 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 separation in a way that we have to maintain but when it comes to heart brain coherence there is technology you can use to increase that and you can also observe it getting disrupted when we have space weather as well you can ride it in multiple directions i've noticed be able people be able to take the space weather charge that we're getting and use it to move into the astral upper astral plane in their meditation and do a lot of really wonderful experiences and have a lot of breakthroughs and then i've seen people get pulled right under the tide or pulled right under the wave and they're just getting tossed around in the the sand and they're just they're just having a mess they're having a fit they're having an issue they're releasing density in a different way but it's force everyone has to do it so it's almost like for our heart brain coherence on earth we have to figure out how to do it ourselves keep up with other people who are working on that there's the heart math institute which is doing it and they have webs they on their website they also measure the schumann resonances in six locations and i watch them too I also watched their global consciousness, a global co coherence dot that they do, which is where they measure around the world, a random number generator machine. And that machine will, those machines will either be in coherence or not. And they color code it all day long. So we watch the color coding go up and down. So I think as we evolve, we're going to experiment with this more on a planetary level. That's what we can do. And you can do in your chats every time is just bring people into heart brain coherence and see if it shows up on the global chart or not, because it might even just to have the idea occur to you that you want to do something to increase the consciousness. It's not just your thought. You're riding a wave that's already happening. A lot of people even want to take credit even for some of the Schumann blasts or some of the solar storms, personal credit or just because they had, even just because they had a large meditation group working at the same time as this event. And again, it, we're all just riding the current. There's, we're just like fish in this ocean, this current that's happening to think that you're the fish pushing the water to make everyone, it, it's just not true in my opinion. I, I, it's a humbling experience constantly to do this work in, in with the spiritual community because there is that ego there too where the people who are more heart-led feel that they know what they're doing and that they're in the right rhythm with everything, and they are. And then there's people who are more led with their minds who are, in a way, trying to distract and destroy the heart's confidence in itself by thinking too much. But the mind should know what the benefit of heart coherence and cooperation is for it and for its ability to access even higher experiences so i think it does come from the heart first but we are we have to become coherent with it in a way and that's what i'm also teaching and i think watching the storms and watching nature helps people come more in coherence with their heart and give their brain something to find the patterns within again because everything i study is diurnal patterns your heart and your brain will go through diurnal patterns, seasonal patterns. We're going to the solstice real quick. All space weather is about to just go weird because of the solstice. And it just is that way. I've noticed it every single year. I only celebrate the solstices and the equinoxes now as official holidays, as my like own religion now, because the planetary uh, season seems to be the only truth and the only real like shift points that I've noticed even in the science that is real and the psychology of everyone on earth. And if we could just celebrate during those points instead of not pay attention to them, I think we would become again in way more coherence. So I'm glad that you know about that too, because let's just keep like pushing that word out there. Talk about it as much as you feel like you need to, because I think it's a great seed to plant and people I'm on board hundred percent on that. It's so important. I don't even have the right words. Sometimes I'm still learning just to even say the right things to make the impact and make it sufficient for people and efficient for people. Give them a one-liner that'll allow them to make a new choice with what they do with their time. Like if you're irritated, check the space weather. That's what I've learned. And it saved my life because it's so, it's, you take you out of your ego completely. You're like, oh, I'm just a piece of this huge 
biology experiment, this planet, this mothership that we're on. It's, and there are people watching and managing it. I've also observed that and managing the opinion of it, hiding information about it. I can't do my study properly. I had to scrub basically any sort of idea of proper study because the data was not being uploaded on the days that I was predicting were supposed to be big data days. So it got shitty really quick. And then, then we had to go talk more about our feelings instead because there was no data there. <laughs> you mean like, uh, I, was it 11 days or something that it was just no chart, no no information yeah. given? I did see that happen. That yeah. was the longest one. This is why I was curious, like who's in charge? Because right. that that... I wondered if if the information could be manipulated or like they said, they just didn't turn it in. But I was really pleased with a few things you just said about the holiday um, and celebrating along with the earth. You know, I mean, that that just feels good to me. <laughs> like, like to actually celebrate along with the earth and recognize the earth as a spirit and, and like, okay, let's, let's live in balance with you, with each other, but yeah. to actually respect Gaia and honor her in that way. But then also too, if we have this information, we can either get slapped down by the wave for not having it, or we can ride the wave like really get your surfboard out and be like okay i'm gonna there's some intense things coming let me make sure i can get the most out of it because now i understand it because i have the information and so yeah becoming even powerful at manifesting you know our our focus and our energy and our growth during these times um yeah i'm not sure if you were finished with your thought completely Okay, Jonathan, did you also have another? Um, well, yeah, she covered she covered a lot of it, and you know, my experience of for the past you know even fifteen years having constant migraines that would just pop up and, and really being inundated with with things that I didn't know. I thought there was something wrong with me, and then when I started on my journey and I started checking, you know. Uh, I think it's Mystery and BB three three three. Yeah, yeah. He, he's he's been solid and he's been you know he's been on top on on the ball. Um, and so once he started showing up the 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 flares and everything, and I was able to feel ride the wave essentially of when I doing the work that I do with uh, with uh, oxytonal and things. It's just being able to. Uh, ground it and use it it's kind of like literally you're riding a wave literally and you're juggling and and allowing it to ground through you and to through your clients right exactly what you were saying but i also what jumped out at me is when you were talking about the noon hour peak yeah um that most third world countries and the ones that are aware they send people to have a nap but yeah. we send people out to have lunch and go and kids to go play outside in this <laughs> yeah. it's like okay is that first world issue but um no and josh you were on point with it too so i'm so sorry to hear you had headaches i've oh. that breaks my heart because oh, that's a lot I'd of people crippling migraines and yeah. i'd be at i'd be at work and you know i was working in the kitchen as an assistant uh Head oh, so much it, work. Yeah. And the jib would come out of nowhere. So I'd be like, okay, I, I had a good amount of sleep. I had water in me. I'm like, what is going on? But it's hard to be your soul everywhere is in the kitchen. Yeah. That you can't ground any ground any of that, right? And it would it would take me out every single time. I mean, can't couldn't see anything oh. visual. Like all I see is a dot and it can subtly see stuff right here. But, you know, nauseous. You just shut right down. Shut right down. And so once I, I actually started being mindful of what's going on, I could, I, I know exactly when things are about to pop off, when, you know. And, and at the same time, I, I've gotten lots of information and, and some, uh, some awareness of kind of when we're bypassing through or there's souls coming in, there's, 
there's the visuals it was like it would be going through uh a portal essentially right and it would we see start... a lot of portals in this yeah arc. yeah yeah, and it would be go. Oh yeah, <laughs> you know, it would be go, and it'd be like, okay, this is not average migraine. This is, I'm doing a workshop talking about uh, connecting with guides and stuff, and other and other uh, higher selves and stuff. And you know, the portal would be every. It'd be like every blink of an eye would start to get closer and closer and closer, and I would go through. I'm like, and then after that, it'd be I went through the portal, and it's like it, it all started to settle, right? that's so visual like a lot a lot of people are getting it the same way you are but did you have to open your third eye and crown more after you're getting those headaches did that help because i've noticed yes okay. yes it was like yeah exactly that it was like my my third eye was wanting to oh my body was wanting me to receive right. my mind and you know working on opening my heart at the same time is kind of like that pinnacle allows it to come down and allows it to fully receive and not be, you know, so traumatic, traumatic. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> if the, the, the Lotus on the head is can absorb all that information. Cause it's like downloads and it is the, that's why we watch the Aurora Borealis. Cause it's right. the same thing happening to the mm -hmm. earth, exactly. so, which is happening right now. Mm -hmm. getting all my notifications. Yep. Oh, well, yeah, there was one that just, I just looked when you post the links and there's a massive one that just literally popped off, like probably as you guys started the, the video. Yeah. It's good though, because mm -hmm. we're, we're getting on top of it now as a collective, there was a problem. And I assume that's why some of us woke up to be like, we have to watchdog this because people are just straight up dying from yeah. torture. They're being tortured all the yeah. time. And they weren't going to tell you why. No one was going to tell you guys why we had to do it ourselves, which, mm -hmm. thank God, mm -hmm. YouTube, and we had it, like, <laughs> and then mm -hmm. the misinformation was getting really bad. And that's when I was, like, frustrated because it was, it was almost like these people were, they were channeling their crown chakra downloads they were getting, mm -hmm. but they weren't grounding it through the whole body and being human about it so it was right. throwing people off people thought they were going to leave the portal you know like yeah. they were going to yeah. be jumping out of their portals yeah. and that is i think how we do but mm -hmm. i don't think for the most part that's what our plan is i think we're meant to sustain what this shift is and the uncomfortable mm -hmm. repairing i think of our earth's magnetic field and so yeah. on and from the damage and that's why it's weird watching them keep launching rockets for me because yeah you think that that would be damaging and counterproductive if we're trying to keep this thing solid. Mm -hmm. So I, I'm wondering, like, there's got to be a reason. There's got to be a lesser evil or something going on always in my mind. So mm -hmm. I'm trying to watch what the public space and, and upper atmosphere stuff that they're doing, but publicly talking about and then watching all this other like secret stuff just falling back to the earth and people all of a sudden feeling better and in a whole state all one day like i've noticed that multiple times where mm -hmm. or a storm will pass through a state and i i swear it's a mothership like and they're riding that noon hour portal between the sun and the earth and it's just this like portal where stuff can just happen on the surface of the earth where the sun's directly hitting and if you're napping you can use that portal to jump through and astrally project i assume mm -hmm. through through the star lineage or whatever the star lines mm -hmm. and yeah the heavy metals has been a big issue that i talk about too a lot because you mm -hmm. probably had to chelate all that stuff out of you too to help with yep. your headaches and yeah yeah i had big to time. yeah i used to i used to you know i used to drink well before that i used to drink like four five six liters of water you know but i used to be i used to play football so there was so much of yeah. the metals that I would be receiving that would eat, you know, shrimp and stuff like that. Mm. No, not in balance, definitely out of balance. So there was just a lot that I had to be on top of. And you know, since I done that, then I'm, I'm not as physically crippled when, when it comes in. Um, right. Yeah. What was I going to say? Hmm. I'll come up later. <laughs> I'm so 
just, I love it. <laughs> I love talking to you, girl. Okay, so my only other question would be about the three sons. I've heard this saying that there's three sons huh. out into the, you know, our solar sun, our internal sun, and then the interplanetary sun. Oh, nice. Any thoughts on that? I like that. I like that concept. I wasn't sure what you meant. I was like, oh, I don't know <laughs> this one. But yeah, I do think there is there is a sun in the earth. Or in the earth. I, I feel that that's real and mm -hmm. there is a lot going on in there. But I also almost sense that it's almost unfathomable what's happening in the earth to our consciousness. It's almost like a dream realm or something so i'm trying to figure that out as well as i like i'm astrally projecting around trying to figure things out politely not stepping in anyone's space or getting in their space but the sun our sun is totally a city there's a lot going on in there as well and there was just an episode of a show i watched i watch religiously and they were talking they're making fun of like the very old style sun worship and religions and stuff and it was very funny and then the sun in internally i felt on a massive scale i think your solar plexus is that sun because i do get it in the middle of my chest and when i'm around people like us in physical was the first time i noticed that my sun and my chest just like expanded like huge and i was like super self-conscious because i had no idea what was going on at the time but i had just finally broken through in my social life to be in a group of people that resonated with me as a person and what I was supposed to do on the planet for the first time so my, I think my body was just like in bliss and it was just expanding so I still feel that feeling now but it's I worked with it I used it to inform me and now I do it all the time I have meetups and do videos like this all the time so inner sun it's always shining it's activated for me and I hope to activate it for people too by learning more about the sun and their chakras too and their own confidence and being out there and going for their mission and being activated by these solar flares like people get hallelujah like ah oh, like inspirations like and it hits your crown chakra and you're you see and you know something new and our sun could be flaring because another sun nearby exploded like there is this connection between all the stars so the information coming through our sun could have all this like always different it's very cool it i don't know why people cool. don't talk about it more i don't know well because everybody needs to be hanging out with you it's just matter factual i think you all just know it i'm just obsessing over something everyone already knows I know, but we need you giving us these little tidbits to be like stimulating our. I think it's, it's something that's on the back burner because everybody's running around doing readings, right? And we're trying to see spiritual stuff and we're trying to see what's here, right here in front of us. Mm -hmm. And it's just hard to keep up with all these different informations. But this seems like, like I said, like some people watch the news, right? Every morning at 6 a.m. before they go to work, right? And then they watch it again at 6 p.m. before they go or before they go to bed, you know, like yes. the news is a part of their day. And so here we are as people who've gotten away from watching the news, right? Because it's the wrong news. Yeah. But here, we, if we can get this, this part, this is like, you need this for daily living. Like, how am I going to plan my week? Yes. What am I going to do with my kids and my family? What am, what am I going to do with the sick people and the elderly? Okay. And what am I going to do with the people I'm coaching or healing or doing work on? This is, like I'm saying, a staple of information that needs to get back to this point. But I think we've we've gotten out of the idea of the news and we have certain shows we watch, but it's almost like, I mean... I, I would even wonder what you think of what's something else we need to know about daily. You know what I mean? Something that we need to integrate daily. And it's like, here's our news. <laughs> here's our yeah, list of the 6 a.m. What we need to get cracking with, you know, after you sit with spirit and do your meditation. Okay. How, how else can I better plan the day to maximize my performance and not to make it into a job like thing, but to, you know? This is just, 
a huge tool that just seems very important. And I'm grateful because I think I was, I know I wanted information about this human resonance, but I wasn't even aware of the intensity of just this. You haven't even started the PowerPoint yet. You hadn't showed me a picture yet, but just learning what I've learned so far, how much way more important it is in my life. You know, I've seen people bring it up and I'm like, okay, what does it mean? Well, this part is green. And I'm like, I don't know what you're talking about. You know, you got to break it down. Dummy <laughs> for dummies for me. Like, like that big yellow book, you know? <laughs> so I'm going to let you get rolling and show us what you want to share because I'm, I'm just like in awe, like. <sighs> okay. Can, Can you see that? Okay. Yes, beautiful. All right, so this is the first thing I want to show you. This is basically, you know how you were asking me about the who is they about the space weather, the who is they of the situation is this guy over here. If you can see my mouse, it's the NOAA and also NASA, but it's basically the National Oceanic and Atmosphere Administration. And this is in the English speaking world, the best source that I have. And they will just, for example, if you can see right here, just a small example, there's missing data here, for example, it's just gone all the way down all the different measurements. There's just, they've just skipped like half an hour for people who are more like casual. Obviously that's probably not going to be a big deal, but those little half hours could be hiding like a huge deal that. It's just convenient to just let go because it was such a brief but strong experience. And I've noticed that those get deleted the most. The brief but strong ones, when they shut down the the charts and stuff for 11 days and all, all that maintenance, that was way, way beyond normal. They rarely do they do it longer than even, I think the longest before that was like five days. So it was pretty long. So they might do it again. Actually, yeah, they tend to do it around October. So I've noticed that also October, November, but here is the solar wind speed of the sun. So first, if you want to know what's going on, you can watch the sun begin just up increasing the amount of speed of wind that's hitting us. This is the purple line. It says speed right here. This is one I share a while. And basically it just is very easy to notice when the swoop just starts going upward because that that heightened speed is very noticeable. There's also da missing data amongst here in the data points from this last surge of wind that I'm going to show you happened. So let's ignore this now because this is the one that a lot of people share and the one you want to know more about. This is measuring the atmosphere. Are you guys like dinging me on purpose? I'm hearing all these like little sounds. I just want to make sure I'm not ignoring you. Oh no, it's okay. It's the doorbell. People are coming in. Okay. So yeah, this is the Russian one I fell in love with and everyone went, went crazy with. And it measures the amplitude of zero hertz to 40 hertz. So that whole range of frequencies, it measures how amplified it gets over time. And it measures it with color in this one. So when it turns from dark blue to white is there their color scale. So mostly we're watching for when things start turning all white because that means that the data available is now just beyond its reach. There's no color beyond white. So we just watch the white moments really. And there's a more specific um, chart to show oh, you. So white is meaning that it's at 40 or above, like too much to measure or I don't in a way for this chart it's too much to measure basically after a certain point and it's showing an amplitude is happening in this particular range of frequencies so if you look on the left it's zero at the top and then it goes down to 40 at the bottom you mm. can see that some lines of amplitude are stretching all the way from the top to the bottom here so that's just in this amount of time the time on the bottom all these frequencies were getting amplified more than 
average. And that's all you can really tell from this because the colors are not specific enough. All you can tell is what, what frequencies and how much time were they being overstimulated. Then there's information here you can see along the time in the background. There's these ones that are horizontal. And this is the earth stuff. This is the earth frequency right here. The strongest one on earth is this one right here. It's just under eight Hertz. And it's always, 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 always there. It's getting picked up on these, these machines. And then there's a few more, which are the other Schumann resonances. So this is the first one. Then there's the second one. Third is not as strong. Fourth, you can still see them here. But then there's these other lines here that are like really strong. These are mechanical lines. I noticed that we're likely just always. picking up on machinery somewhere because it's i'm gonna much. stop you okay because now i understand something and i want to make sure that i got it reiterate this so it's not that during that time it reached 40 20 or 4 it's saying of all the frequencies that exist at once at this point in time when it turned white that particular frequency was so was unmeasurable because it there was so it was so intense at that time. Yeah, it was. I was looking at it more like that. Um, what do you call those charts? Um, like a plot chart where you're going one point at a time, and this is all these points at one time. But the color is what's telling us what's happening. Right. You and broke then, the mold already, girl. You done. Don't taught me something. Okay. <laughs> and you can see also there's weirdness here. You can see the extreme levels of almost two perfect looking lines all happening all over this thing. And horizontally and vertically, there's a lot of sharpness. That's not normal. I would go on my channel and be like, something weird's going on. It looks like they're trying to mind control people between sleeping to their about working level, like waking up and wanting to work. All those frequencies between waking up and wanting to work are all being mind controlled, it looks like the last couple of days and being interrupted super hard. But below that, once you get into high beta and you start working, they leave you alone. It's like, you're allowed to be in the work mindset. You're not being interrupted down here. But if you wanna meditate or have any sort of relaxation, you're gonna get all chopped up, your brain waves. That's what it looks like to me. So. I'm mostly also potentially watching Russia torture their people uh, low-key with this all the time. So I noticed it is uh, it is fun. It is fun and scary, but also for some reason I'm just allowed to do it. And, and I'm not the only one doing it now. It's just this popularized thing. But the seriousness of what I see sometimes, I wonder for the people near Tomsk, Russia, especially like what, how they're feeling and what the heck just happened to them because I see some wild things. And I also have a, a measurement that does an Italian city. And I check in with those Italians and they, they're like, what just happened to us? And I, I'm not even sure. I really do think it does have to do with human electromagnetic frequency interruption stuff. Like they're doing mind control stuff with people and trying to interrupt the nature and confuse people. <laughs> it's annoying. So I watch them try and do this with the four Schumann resonances. This is what this measures, those background lines. They will tell you the strength that those four lines have gotten to, those four natural frequencies of Earth, but they won't talk about any of the other frequencies on this whole scale right here, up and down. They won't tell you anything else. They'll just tell you about those four frequencies and how strong they got. And often, again, it's not accurate, but the primary frequency this one down here does get charged the most. You can see here's that episode where it got charged more to get to be red or orange or white. And so that's hour 23 there at the bottom. Go back, hour 23. Doesn't even show much of anything. It's just amplitude of a nine like it it's nothing and this is a nano tesla so they're really 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 quiet apparently these amplified moments so we get all freaked out but the measurements are actually really low but if it's on a global scale it doesn't seem to matter the amplitude can be pretty low and we seem to respond to it pretty easy we're pretty sensitive 
I think, beings. They don't need to do a lot. It's actually kind of a minute, mm -hmm. it seems like it's more minute science of stoking the yeah. brain waves and so on. So we don't notice, but it still makes us uncomfortable. And mostly everyone will notice if they're paying attention. Otherwise, they're just taking some sort of distraction to calm their nervous system at random intervals, like drinking or SSRIs or like whatever they're doing unconsciously to pain kill. We want a people, we want people to do it consciously, use their medicines consciously to take care of their bodies. So if you're seeing a crazy storm, you can still take your medicine, but you'll know that, oh, this is going to pass. So I'm not going to have to keep taking this all night. We can watch the storm relax and then you can stop taking your medicine. One second. I want to just say something because you, you're talking about manipulation and during times when they want people to work, like staying in work mode. Yeah. I actually saw a show called Better Off Ted where <laughs> they were making these new chairs for work and they made them uncomfortable so that people wouldn't sit still and fall asleep at work. That makes sense. So they would keep fidgeting, but it was like, okay, they'll keep working. But <laughs> That's but what I feel like I watch happen all the time on earth. Cause this is, yeah. the, that's the earth based stuff. This, this one is the response to the nature, the current earth condition. So that's. Wow. <laughs> yeah. And they'll do it along the time of when the sun's natural energy is also like inseminating earth. When that wave of solar, whatever's supposed to hit us, I'll notice that the technological side or all these graphs on the earth side start looking really weird and there's a bunch of charges and Elon's launching rockets. Like there's stuff starts <laughs> happening and I'm like, okay, I'm hearing, you know, I'm hearing military craft in the sky, things like that. It's heavier on those days. And where we live is near, it, near a bunch of bases, a bunch of random ones that are doing their own little thing. Cause Sedona is its own little base intergalactically. And then more activity over by Phoenix and in California, you guys are watching those bases and those activities, for example, Florida, also Texas, just watch the days that are more heavy with the, the trails as well. The trails mean the sun is about to give you something and the, the flying around of all of the craft and everything. That's almost like the, the manifestation of life that the sun did give us. It's like that it's that what we're doing with that energy that day. And on those levels of the chess game, there's a lot of deals and a lot of flights and a lot of military action to happen because there's coherence, there's energy for it. And they're noisy. So they're easier to pay attention to. <laughs> I've noticed when they start getting active, um, the animals will do it too, though, the bugs even, and then the wind, like the wind comes in, it brings the storms. It, the pressure from the solar wind presses on our atmosphere and makes the air move in our atmosphere. So wherever we're getting all the solar radiation, it's pushing air out from that point. And that's what meteorologists study is they're just watching this atmosphere get heat up and the air and the water move out of the way in a way and how it's going to affect us. And if it pools up or whatever. It's, since you said that, um, is barometric pressure a part of any of this? Yes. And UV radiation is another one. My dad, when he was learning what I was getting into and trying to understand, he was like, you should watch the UV and the barometric pressure. He picked up on it, but mm -hmm. I looked online and they don't have, I have not ever found a tool. There was one and I even emailed them because they had just deleted the tool where you could look at the global UV radiation and the barometric pressure. <laughs> and I emailed them like, why did you delete that? They're like, oh, then no real replies, just like, oh, we didn't need it. Do they even talk about that on the news anymore, barometric pressure? I don't know. I don't know either because I haven't watched the weather. I said, you know, I have to call people. If 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 water hits my windshield, I have to call people and say, is it raining? Because I don't watch the news. So that's like my joke, you know. But um, <laughs> <laughs> like, I don't, I don't watch it. I have to ask people, is it really raining? Um. Yeah, because to my understanding, I know the bugs do something during the bar barometric pressure, like something with mosquitoes, I, I remember, but can't remember exactly what, if there was more mosquitoes or less. Uh, I know I birds, birds fly lower, you know, as a warning, things like that. 
So, well, and this one figure I'm showing you is sort of the side view of our earth getting that solar wind washing mm -hmm. over it. And so you can see it from space, like the actual pressure we're being put under. And this redness you can see near the back half or the night side of the earth, the left side, that's all the aurora borealis and that pressure we're feeling right now coming in. And so it's hitting everybody who's sleeping. They're getting a lot more of it right now, ironically, a lot more of that energy that needs to be kind of dealt with. So all of our people sleeping right now, when they wake up, we'll have to ask them what their dreams were like, because their processing looks like a lot of pressure and compressing maybe the whole astral plane, like look, getting some stuff done, making some things, getting some decisions and shooting off <laughs> out the back door of earth. Like, okay, bye everybody. This means it's, we need to start taking some naps, y'all. <laughs> it is nap day for sure. Yeah. Take it easy on yourself today. I've noticed also during last year, this time, this pressure point at the back side of the earth actually just opened up. Like there was just a full blown hole at the backside, right out into space. And I had no idea that was possible. It was just didn't make any sense at all. And then we saw all these tweets and so on about a lot of people in the financial sector going to Antarctica during that time. And it was around this time this Ooh. year. And it kind of felt like I was watching them open up a hole at the back side of our magnetic field and travel or do things at the back side during that time. And I've been seeing a couple more reports of some people going to Antarctica recently. So I was going to see if this is opening up again, if it's another round of deportation going on. I have heard that that might be what's going on, but I saw some proof. You know, I follow a lot of the channelers and galactic people that you guys do, and I cherry pick and pull and I get shown certain things, but everyone kind of can get on each other's case because they're not 100% benevolent, angelic beings walking the earth, but they do channel some helpful bits and we are helping each other like shove puzzle pieces and information in despite our distortions there's still some good that bubbles up and helps out the collective and I'm grateful that I've been able to kind of float and be a useful source for everybody when they need it especially when they're not feeling good I find that's when people come and check on me like hey I don't feel so good what is what is going on a lot of the really heightened spiritual people I know too who are often channeling They'll come to me in those days, like, all right, Alexis, you know, what, what is the, what's the problem? Because their abilities are being hindered, and, <laughs> you know, they want you to flip the switch on the sun, like, girl, turn the lights back on. <laughs> yeah. And this pressure will, it, it's almost like it creates uh, a thickness between us and the galactic energy. When our, our field's getting like this, it makes it thicker. And so all of our galactic channelers may be struggling today, especially because they'll be like not getting any messages from the Pleiadians today or whatever, because <laughs> it's too thick. You're going to have to stay with Gaia today and rest and be in the mud and deal with what she's dealing with today. I just saw this fact yesterday. I was on someone else's chat about Antarctica because you brought up Antarctica. I got to talk about it. Okay. So, um, this continent is bigger than Europe, bigger, bigger than the United States and Mexico combined. So it's hard to imagine. Yeah. Antarctica is bigger than Europe, United States and Mexico combined. I think we have a hard time, you know, the way that they uh, make the globe, it makes it like it's this little thing at the bottom, like, okay, you don't really need to know about this. Um, and people got into this conversation about people can visit Antarctica from, in, it's so funny because I think we did an episode about um, Mandela effects. Remember, Jonathan? Nice. And for some of us, we remember you could not go to Antarctica. And then some of us don't remember that. <laughs> but now it's like no it's a happening place you can go there get your flip-flops and and come on down and it, it doesn't really make sense because from what i had learned you would get shot down like if you flew over it and went near it without permission you were going to get beat down okay um one thing that i found very strange about it is how do a hundred countries come together and put a treaty on antarctica like, that doesn't make sense to me because you've never done it anywhere else. Do you know anywhere else where we decided I'm not going to, um like, 
blow you up and take what you got to get it. So it just really doesn't make sense for a hundred people to be like, okay, I'm in, let's be nice. We're going to be cool. Let's just go hang out and, and put a flag here. Like, it doesn't make sense to me that a hundred separate countries put a treaty in this one place. So it definitely got, you know, major things going on that no one's talking about. And if somebody is a flat earther, they're going to say that basically that's like the edge of the earth for them, right? Like, right, right. like if the earth was a plate, which would kind of make sense because just like stop here, can't go any further. And just with the way those, and I'm not saying I believe in flat earth. I'm just saying the way that they map the flights, right. I don't really understand what's going on. So <laughs> I had to throw that in. <laughs> yes, they're, they're very official, these, these deliveries and uh, I've noticed, at least on my end, when the people are traveling there, it's still pretty tightly controlled, but I don't know. I haven't seen anybody partying out there. Have you? Mm, I've seen some pictures, but to me, that looks like a bunch of fake nonsense, but you know, people want to buy it. People want to believe it. I still don't think that they shot a rocket to the moon. So, I mean, yeah, people go there, but not the way you think. So (laughs) I will believe that they shot a rocket through the water and went in outer space before I believe that that they had, um, you know, that Buzz and all those guys went to the moon. So that's just me. I get yeah. cussed out for that sometimes, though. <laughs> we have a lot to sort out. Yeah. Got some explaining to do. <laughs> we really do. And I'm curious how that's ever going to even happen because it seems like it's becoming less coherent, not more coherent sometimes. And I was, you'd think it would be the opposite. So now I'm just enjoying sitting in the cosmic soup, but the data I'm gathering seems to still matter and help and the physics there seems to still check out. So I'm still looking at it, but sometimes I wonder if we're, we're just inside a container and I'm looking at a sun in the middle. And like you said, you leave through the ocean, you go the other way, or if it's inverted or what. So I have those thoughts also. Thankfully, I don't have a ship that I can check it out with right now or else I'll let you know, but that's on the list also as things that I could manifest. So, and we're not the only ones there's, there is some common themes I've noticed with people, what they're seeing, what could be coming. And here's the other, one of the other things that I watch. And this is, again, this is the institution here at the NOAA talking about solar flares. And it's weird because like I said, there's all the EMF spectrum comes off of a solar flare but they just measure the x-ray radiation for some reason publicly. And that's really all you get when a flare goes off. They just tell you how much intensity was their x-ray radiation of this thing, but not the rest of the spectrum. So not the edible part. Right. What is that? What about in the physical light spectrum? You know, the visible light spectrum, what is that going to be like? And people do see a difference. They will go outside and be like, wow, the light is a different color. And it's just it looks a normal like thing. a flashlight sometimes. It's very bright. It looks, you, you ever seen like a flashlight when it was dimming and it has like solid in the middle and then it's like kind of gray on the outside and it has these rings? It looks like a flashlight. Sometimes it looks like somebody's shining a spotlight on you. You're like, what the? How is the two beams just shooting out to the side? That's what my porch light looks like. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. We're You're going to have to figure that one out. <laughs> Yeah, I know. I keep thinking that when they flip the switch and the video game is over, we're going to be like so busy on to something else. Nobody's going to look back and try to sort out all these details. I, I keep saying to some people, we just amuse ourselves now. No need to Me argue. Too. Just amuse ourselves and observe. And I feel you. Like, I we won't care. We'll be doing something else. <laughs> There's so many fun things to obsess over, whatever's relevant. And this one seemed to be fun. This is the x-rays. Like I said, this is just watching solar flares over the last few days. It's actually been pretty chill since the fifth. Overall, it's been more chill. But today there was one. You can see there was a little pop almost to an M class. They sneak them. They make them look smaller than they are. I've also noticed that I've been watching these charts for years. And then I've watched as well this the this stuff. I've watched this satellite footage of the sun and i've watched them change the tint i've watched them darken it i've watched them blur it i've watched i've watched all of these charts get their number 
changed so it looks less intense. I've watched a lot of data manipulation where you can make charts and graphs change appearance and then with filtering and so on too, which has been fascinating. So it's funny because like I, you were saying, even all the science and all of this can be debated. All of what I'm showing people could be false. It could have been replaced, whatever. But there's still, for some reason, I've been allowed to keep a line of logic and the line of the study working enough where it does make sense and it is helping people. So it's kept me going. And I've actually hoped that one day someone would be like, oh, Alexis, what about this? And I'd just be like, oh my God, thank you for telling me this so I can expand as a human being and stop pursuing this question and start pursuing a new question. And I've just mostly just feel like I've now been just seated in a position of being Earth's weather woman and just helping people with this process and entertaining myself on the process also as a psychic where I get a bunch of spiritual information about these blasts in the sun and what it's doing. And some days it's a phenomenal feeling and I am euphoric and I have this whatever instructions. What the last one was really a few days ago where I was saying, this is an ascension wave, go look at the sunlight, whatever this energy is, it's healing energy. I'm getting a huge hit off of this. So a lot of people did go outside. They're all on my mailing list and all my free services and stuff too. But I told everybody, all my members, everyone, just go sun gaze today and absorb these codes because they were important. And I get those hits once in a while, but I'm watching 365. I've been doing this for like six years and it never gets bored. It's like, it's never, I'm never getting bored. I'm not getting bored of this. People keep interviewing me about it. I'm like, okay, here's my interpretation of space. <laughs> Hope it'll help. You guys, I think we all need to get together and contact Newsmax so we can get her on there. Everybody. Let's go you on the news. Newsmax. You need the spot, y'all. I want to start interviewing meteorologists and just start grilling them like, they don't know anything. I don't know what a meteorologist is. Did you ever see that class in college, y'all? I keep yeah. saying this, like, have you ever met anybody who worked at a nuclear power plant besides Homer Simpson? <laughs> no such, I really just don't think there's people doing these jobs. I you agree. Know, you go to the, the, the meteorologist is somebody who stands there and points at the screen. I mean, it's, it's a green screen. It's very cute. I know. And they're watching some clouds roll over and they can only and, be a very and so the Doppler, accurate. Please don't forget the Doppler. Do you remember? I'm like old enough when the Doppler first came out and all they talk, the Doppler, the Doppler. And they were like training us like, oh, the Doppler, the Doppler. Right. Like, I was like, oh my God, they're programming us to, to worship the Doppler. I don't know. I just remember that. And I was like, what the hell is the Doppler? Like, okay, got it. I if mean, I could so design... Sorry, yeah, they had to come up with a bunch of storms so that they could pay for it, right? Because this is what happens. Okay? <laughs> Every time there's a storm, we got to talk about the Doppler and then, you know, the commercials for bread go up. And then if they advertise the storm, like here in Florida, all the time they're advertising these hurricanes. And I say advertising the hurricanes right. because what happens during the hurricane, everybody goes and gets a bunch of bread, they get a bunch of water and they go to Lowe's and they start buying stuff. Yes. So yeah, the do brought to you by the Doppler. Yeah, we got to pay for it. So Lowe's is sponsoring the Doppler and they're, they're sponsoring every fucking hurricane that there is. So, you know. Right? It was another, uh, awful to watch, down. It, watch them doing it this year, really just advertising and it's bizarre. It's very bizarre. And I have apps for all this stuff. Like there's all these different apps. I have to go to all these different resources. But like you said, if we could just open or turn on, open our phone or whatever, and you could access a report about this stuff that was concise, all done by robots, because this is all being tracked by AI anyways. That's the best way to track data where humans are, we need to sleep. Like we can't do it the same way. So they're tracking all of this stuff. There probably is an app. There probably is some sort of secret agent who wakes up and is like, blah, blah, blah. Okay. And like they go on with their day and they have this, I'm sure. And we're just doing the like civilian back, like back rooms, picking up the pieces because I maybe remember being able to do this in my last life, or this was a very common thing where I 
where I used to live. So to not have it was so jarring that I had to create it again or some sort of impulse. But I believe it's very possible. People want me to make those reports. I do what I can. I have a bot in my Telegram chat room that you can now activate whenever you want. And it'll populate a bunch of pictures of the space weather from a lot of different sources. So you can get a decent like picture, uh, overall summary, just a quick look. We can, I want to expand on it. I would love a developer who could, I could just tell them all the things and all the data that they could combine for this app that could just update you every morning or whatever. That would be awesome. And one day, maybe that'll happen. I've prayed for apps in the past. This is one that I prayed for another person named Alexander very close, made this app and responds to my emails and I've helped him make it. And it gives you notifications when the Schumann in Italy, no, when the Schumann in Russia resonances are getting activated, which is basically our waking brainwave state. So if our waking brainwave state is getting super activated, basically our hyper-consciousness gets activated and everyone wants to know what's going on. We're all thinking about stuff. We just start thinking way more doesn't matter if it's in Russia. It just doesn't seem to matter. But then Italy, there's one on there too. So you can get this app. This is like $1.99. I don't get any money from this. I wish I did, <laughs> but I don't care because the app, everything is happening so fast. It doesn't matter. Like the person who made the bot for my telegram is a different person. Don't know who they are. They just made it for me. And we're like, you can use this. And I was like, okay. So it seems people are filling in the gaps where I can't, but it's just been this like, this rapid process of just getting this information to our community so they can be informed like this one, Space Weather Live. I tell everyone to get this app. Everyone in our whole community needs this app because it'll tell you when the solar flare happens. It'll tell you. It'll tell you when this geomagnetic storm or the aurora is going to go off. It'll tell you right away. And then you're good. You get the app. It'll ding you. As soon as you're about to freak out at your partner or cancel an appointment or something like that and it'll hit you right on time or if you're about to do a live stream that happens to me a lot one of these apps will pop off and I'm like okay well we're in alignment or we're not things but an energy is having to change like there's an energy shift happening gotta ride the the shifts gotta ride the mutation moment because yeah the planet is basically at the sun's every whim we're just passively experiencing this huge star and and then our own star i think in the earth or the earth star is having this response and a lot of people watch those as well which is the earthquakes and the volcanoes and with my psychic abilities that's what's been coming through a lot lately as they've been telling me about the volcanoes and they told me about mauna loa before it was going off about a couple weeks and I was frantically posting about it asking anyone who lived on my, on the Hawaiian the major the large island is what my guides kept saying the large island because I didn't know anything about Hawaii anyways I don't even say it right you're supposed to say it like Hawaii or something it doesn't matter the colonial energy there is obscene the military energy there is obscene it's a joke there was a queen there there's all these lost spirits and warriors and there's major Polynesian trauma there. There's little issues there. And this, then there's the life force of Pele and Gaia herself in the chakra system of earth. And it's cracking open and making people become spiritually awakened, making them remember, oh, there's land and oh, this earth has a soul. Here it comes bubbling up out of the ground. It could kill us. Like the sheer strength and power that the earth just gently withholds from exercising all the time is kind of powerful. And I they do think there's an intelligence there and there's the earthquake people can now predict when an earthquake can happen based off of the impact mm -hmm. of where the solar wind started hitting us stronger can actually cause earthquakes on the opposite side of the earth just from that impact zone rippling through the planetary's you know side and hitting the other side and causing eruptions and so on so eruptions is a big deal and like I said, I live in Sedona. There's a lot of spiritual people here, a lot of healers, a lot of people who've activated their third eye, their crowns. They lay hands on each other. They clear entities from each other. They have all these past life regressions and we work fast. We have, we've gathered a lot of people here and the skills and I've been engaging with them more in the community lately and things are leveling up again. People are becoming even more, I would say, extreme or almost unrelatable with their abilities and healing capacities and their desires to 
create an event in terraform even people are getting ex- beyond like massive ideas massive inspirations massive levels of what's that word where you have ambition is coming out of this solar cycle as it increases too so we might be able to just ride the energy of the sun to physically create new things on the earth like new retreat centers new amusement parks and retreat areas for people like us to run and it also has to do with the global financials watching all of this has taught me about how energy is being implanted into earth and then it shows up as financial energy as well and the markets will jump and so on when they when this the solar wind arrives and i've also learned that i'm pretty sure the solar flashes can cause gold to be formed in our crust it's a part of the alchemy of earth is so gold is always being built on earth as the sun is flashing us i think and so they try and weigh the earth's gold as a baseline of our wealth but the wealth is constantly being replenished as it's long so as we can interesting you say that because but it needs to be know? replenished because a lot of it was stolen i think a lot of that gold and life force from earth was stolen off planet so we have to like sit here and rebuild it needs to be replenished but i think like I think, yeah people who are of normal means kind of learn about limitation and scarcity right wealthy people learn that wealth is of abundance and the endless supply (laughs) and now that you say this it makes sense why you dig up resources constantly digging up things because you do understand the fact that it's constantly being rebuilt and replenished and is being created so that, that just struck me. During this time, though, I want to ask, like, just right now, because I just asked a couple of people. Okay. Just since you've had this conversation today with us, like me, like at first I could feel like mm, midway through about my t- my forehead starting to feel pressure, move down to my temples. My <laughs> lips are tingling. And... I'm like, is this the Schumann resonance or do people not want Alexis to talk about this right now? (laughs) Terry got kicked out like five times now. (laughs) Yeah, it's a lot. I'm trying to do it gently though, because yeah, if you overrun somebody's circuit with all that amperage that I can bring about this topic, it can be too much. And so I've been practicing that as as a student and a teacher as a youth as well, you know, I am bringing more amperage. I'm going to age and bring less probably over time, despite my efforts, you know, it'll happen, but I'm okay with that. The process of life and death and all that and how our bodies can hold charge. And then they start to deplete their charge as we die. And it just seems to be a part of it. I've been reading books more about it too. And how, even when a body dies, you need to like leave it for three days because all the charge has to leave out of the cells or else your soul is still like, those cells are still alive. <laughs> so you have to like leave a body, just like, let it sleep and rest and let that soul like scoop out of there. You know, yeah. you guys know. 36 <laughs> hours. Yeah. Yeah. For the soul to completely leave the body. Whoa. Which we got to just keep talking about because more people are going to be dying. And so we're going to have a lot more bodies to deal with and respect and handle. So just to have people like respecting death dying at home in your bed surrounded by people in the dark is kind of like the best spot is what I read so if you just and you could just leave them there in that room for a few days and then wrap them up in all those blankets and then you're good because it's going to be messy I mean the body will have its time but it has to it explains a lot I mean a lot of people wondered why people kept bodies in the living room or in the bedroom for days at a time as well and we just got through doing a meditation about releasing and letting go of relationships but also allowing people to pass and paying your respects right um i didn't know if you wanted to say anything about that jonathan or terry since we spoke about that 
I didn't know anything about the 36 hours for the spirit to untether itself. But I don't know too what, what your opinions and thoughts you had, Alexis, on further like respecting and releasing that energy and letting it go as it transitions, how to how to basically pay your respects. I think because the discussion was that we're not having funerals anymore. Right. I it is interesting because I have wondered the same, like what is the appropriate way? And it it really is about leaving the nervous system to totally relax so you can't have lighting or whatever noise if you can't be calm and peaceful in the room then you can't be in there you know because you'll keep pulling the soul back and so you have to allow like in the tomb in a way it's like you create a, a makeshift tomb in your home and this thing goes and then it makes me think a lot it made me think a lot about then why we're digging up a lot of these mummies and so on because it may have just been straight up torture that they did to people to try and keep them trapped here and not move on to the spirit world and so we might be digging them up for mercy and so our planet can be at peace again because there's all these like stuck souls like buried in the ground and that could have been like one of the most evil things that dark priesthood of Egypt figured out is just to trap people. And I didn't, I don't know enough about it, but I do know I have the, the karma or the lifetime to deal with it. Like it's everywhere around my life, but I'm trying to figure out the mummy thing. But when they dug up that lead sarcophagus underneath the Notre Dame, the other, a few years ago, that was a huge hit for me because it was like they're implanting into the grid, like lead torture, like this lead thing, like into the grid line of France, like some sort of, there's like probably a child's body in that thing in that lead sarcophagus, like who knows? And it just, I had all these feelings like, this is what we have to be doing. We have to get this stuff. We have to find these beings and get them out, like save these people. And there's a lot of grid lines and grid points and temples and so on. I think they built the temple on that torture point that they shoved into the grid line to try and pull the magnetic field of the earth and create wealth to go through this city instead of as it naturally goes through this city and pulling the magnetic wealth of the earth and stuff. I've seen lots of visions and stuff and how we correct it now is really happening. Like I feel alive. And when we saw the the Georgia Guidestones come down, I was just shocked. I was like, this is, this is the most American version of one of these and it's totally getting publicly destroyed. I never thought I'd see the day of something like that. So specific. And after that, that was also when they turned CERN back on, which I also think was them correcting potentially what had happened with the technology. They were correcting at that point because they had shut it off. And then I think they were correcting. And then all of these grid points and these weird, creepy buildings broke down and it was awesome. So I think more grid working is going to happen. A lot of these buildings were pretending to be important, but the real grids are norm more normal, more natural. You don't even need a temple on it to show Giant that rocks. There. Yeah, rocks. Giant rocks. Magnetic rocks. Works. And so mm -hmm. if any one of us is feeling guided to like travel this year, especially go somewhere and it's working out, just follow through. Don't Don't get scared because you'll be helping the planet correct herself, in my opinion, big time. Like, I'm really happy. I'm really happy at the progress I saw this year. And I thought there was going to be more by this time this year because the visions there was giving me last year this time was basically like, they're fixing the whole grid. You're going to watch it happen. I was like, yay. And I've seen some, but it's kind of slowed down lately. But I know that a lot of stuff happening behind the scenes that I can't just, I just can't pick up on. But a lot of it is financial, I think. And these upper class families and po politics that is more social clearing instead of the resources. They aren't in control of the resources as much. It's more their mentality and their social circles and drama that needs to get cleared out the most is what I was shown. So I think that's why things are taking a little more time. But why the grid working is good because in community you can heal a lot faster. I am impressed with your perspective on digging up the uh, mummies because I've always looked at it as 
how is it legal to do grave robbing? But anyway, <laughs> I always thought of it as like, That's why funny. are you making stuff up? But then you you just have this enlightened perspective where, yes, I do see exactly what you're saying. And I know Terry had her own question. Um, Terry. Yeah. That's a, a little bit different, but you remember probably about two years ago where we were having these monoliths? Oh, yes. The earth. What is your perspective on those monoliths? Oh, right away, I got the message that it was a university experiment. And I was like, oh, so this is like a psychological experiment. And they're kind of like, yeah, but they're not going to tell you. You know, it was kind of like it was an experiment on the people. But I think it was run by like Columbia University or something. Or you know what I mean? It was like some cute, <laughs> a cutesy situation in a way to begin the conversation about the more serious monoliths that are out there and those sort of things because I do believe those are real and that that uh, Odyssey 2001 Space Odyssey movie where they did that and how it was almost like an activator of consciousness because it was sh shrieking and giving off some sort of crazy frequency I do think those are real and have caused problems and uh Perhaps, I mean, I don't really love the direction that universities take experiments and usually the direction of their humor either. It's twisted. And so they may have been joking about something that was meant to help wake people up, but also was, mm, I would say it was misleading. Like I said, it was likely just a lie or a psyop. And so it is misleading and it is pisses me off that people just want to keep lying to each other and doing all these things to disturb people and it didn't feel right to me at all it felt very disturbing mm. and frustrating but I really liked Oumuamua did you hear about that Terry okay what watch that story because that one that one's gonna be fun they update about it like the same time every year also which is funny but I've learned a lot about that object and it could have been projected towards us from our own people and as well, which is kind of funny. It's, I heard it came from the Pegasus star system in the direction. So there's a lot of stuff about project Pegasus and like time traveling and so on as well in our community of disclosure. So the Pegasus term comes up a lot. And a lot of these projects, I think, are going to be exposing themselves more like the monolith idea, but even more. They're even releasing new aircraft and new technologies like satellite technologies and stuff. Like, we're all going to get satellite phones pretty soon. And they're fighting, the old phone companies are now fighting Elon now, and they're making, like, public fights. It's cute. Like, all of these companies <laughs> have, have public beef. You know that that's not who we're really worried about, but it's that they're the mascots to kind of take over the situation. But all these subversive tech companies, you'd never know their name. Most of them are in Chinese, even like a lot of these names, I couldn't even pronounce them. They're just intelligent people who just went completely tech related in their consciousness and went in this crazy experimental direction. And now we don't even talk about them. They're like, oh, Apple's the problem. You're like, right. Sure. Right. Or Elon's the problem. You're like, right. Yes, for sure. Oh, right. yeah. It's this the celebrity's the problem. Oh, for sure. Like, cute, but. Right. Like, they won't name the actual richest families no. on the planet. And they, yeah. And any public beef is planned. Yeah. Don't make me talk about Jada and Will. Everything is planned. And I'm I'm saying everybody's actors acting like actors act when they're acting. Like that's it, guys. It's if it's if it's acting a to line, live. it's phony. There's no such thing as public beef. It's real beef you won't know about. That those are the ones that leave dead bodies that you'll never see. <laughs> like, yeah, there's no. I feel you. It's it's been it's been interesting. And now I wonder also, now that the new satellite systems are flying a lot lower, what is that going to cause us? What sort of what sort of engagement in our own brainwave, in our own chakra system? Like if you have, if you talk about the chakras above your head, there's a bunch more. They say, what, does the old satellite system engage with blah, blah, blah chakra? And now we're moving down to blah, blah, blah chakra? Like 
do people know about this? The layers of our atmosphere are layers of our own aura. And I haven't even been able to study, like there's a, there's like rivers of current in the upper atmosphere. It's all this information. The military basically is owning it to extreme degree because of all the communication that they want to be able to do flawlessly. I'm assuming to basically run operations off planet, which we're, what I think is what really is going on and why we're just kind of playing games down here. But our military efforts and all of those efforts of the intelligent people are being used to operate fleets in the Andromeda galaxy and stuff like that. Like it feels like that to me. And somehow us civilians are going to have to bridge that gap. And I, I guess we're just going to watch the next 10 years, them expose that we're doing this. I'm not sure. I know there's like five more avatar movies. I just, uh, I just interviewed the guy who was the stunt devil for the first avatar. And he was telling me all about how it's changed since he was a part of the franchise, you know, and what's going on. And <laughs> The confusion even of if it's a planet off planet like where is this place the avatar realm and the all these other space movies i'm just really ready to just be mature adults and just get the real information because we want to know you no know, i think you spend your time better by stocking up on toilet paper so <laughs> you know that's how it works it's funny the petty things that people are you know occupied with yeah yeah. that's probably why they spike the human resonance the way that they do right to keep us down like keep them busy keep them at work keep them not thinking and right. you know fighting in the store over toilet paper yeah yes and spending for the holiday season and you know that that, that this cycle of what's next birthday what's next christmas what's next Okay, vacation is like this <laughs> cycle of what's next. Like, this is how people live their life straight up into the grave. I used to have a vision board class and I would teach people, people tiptoe through life trying to make it safely to the grave. Like, don't upset anybody. Don't say anything. Don't look too hard. Don't smile too hard. Don't laugh too loud. You know, <laughs> just let's make it safe, you know. And here it is. We we live a life where we try to retire and, and we're half dead. And want to take a cruise, you know, it's like, that's where you're, 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 everything is, you know, putting life on hold until, until it's of no value at all, you know? That's right. And I value life and I wanted to know how to make it better. And I'm glad that I pursued the study against, you know, resistance. And I'm glad I did videos against resistance. And I'm glad I continue to post about this against some resistance, but it's not enough. It's just superficial at this point because really there's a lot of momentum. Way more people than me are doing and talking about this. So it's easy, but just being that like face where it's like, I want to talk about this to people right now and let's just get this out here. And there's hope, you know, you're not being, you're not, you can't achieve all your dreams and do the extreme efficient, perfect life because you're being radiated and there's a war going on. And there is, there is science beyond the capacity for you to understand currently happening to you on purpose. Like this has been happening since world war one, like all of this stuff, this, there's so much shit happening that we just have to layer. And obviously I was young and I had to learn really fast and I layer and I layer and I layer and I layer all these patterns and whatever. But as I age, all I've learned is that you just have to be confident and just keep repeating what you're good at because I was born for this. I am a piece of the puzzle and just, so just use me where you can just use me where you think I'm useful and I'll be very, very happy. And I just want to learn what everyone else's uses are and what they're offering and making that very abundantly clear. And we can efficiently run our planet on the surface of civilians the best we can while there's like all these other layers of crap going on that we somehow are involved in sometimes. But I don't think a lot of us civilians are going to be as much involved as we will in the next 20 years. I think we are preparing. That's why they're slowly training us as if we are an army. They always really are. And mm, 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 mm. So. I, I did want to hit this because you talked about the fact that we're radiating it. It's again, just finding out that there is a reason for the way things are happening to you. This is not just you did that you have bad luck it's not just that you you know suck as a person you're not lazy you're not crazy right. you're not any of these things even um me and marvel hit a subject 
of the prison system too, where we don't really think about them as much, right? Because they're not right there in your face. But the fact that a lot of these people are in prison, a lot of this is related to our food. It's related to this radiation. It's related to the manipulation of the mind that has people, yeah. you know. Imprisoned. Imprisoned. I think about the prisoners all the time. Yeah, it's, 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 it's not unexplainable. And they're not. You know, you can think of all the bad things that people do, but there's, my, my sister even asked me when it came to like one of the, the, the guys who shot up at the school or whatever. And I was thinking, mm -hmm. she said, well, what should you do with a person like that? And I was like, well, that's going to be hard to say because I don't know what kind of mind control techniques have been applied to that person to create a soul that goes and does that. Everything is just not that black and white. It's just not that simple. And it's not a matter of this person's morals necessarily. Right. So there's a lot of helpless and harassed. People don't want to, you know, I know we can take responsibility because we got to fight, but some people are put in this place where if they don't know, they just don't know. Yes. That's the see something, say something, I think. That that helps why we're, us. Here. <laughs> we're just a bunch so of monkeys people. trying to yeah. figure out what's going on. <laughs> The really sun is getting very bright and we're confused monkeys and we're hearing weird noises and this water is poison and like the trees aren't growing fruit and there's a problem like the, <laughs> there's been a problem and I'm I'm I want to know where the fruit trees are like I need to move near fruit trees like I don't need to do any of this like where is the water <laughs> and I'm starting to think about these things more too like what do I do and I've been thinking for years like how do I maneuver myself to the place where I can survive without all of this technology but it's had to be this in between like we're not there yet i'm literally in the middle of the desert it's not where i meant to be but clearly something is meant to be here and talk about me talking about this here matters so it, i'm trusting it it matters it matters to me i do want to put in a plug for this y'all i really do think we need to see some of these uh, ascension books we need to be sending them to prisons oh we need to be sending some of these books and information so that these people can understand, like, wait a minute. Yeah, I wish they could I just watch our a better life because we got to let them out, y'all. <laughs> they got to come out as we ascend. People need to be freed, right? And so yes. we need to be giving them the tools they need to actually come out and explore with us what, you know, and really contemplate. I've started sending um, books to my family member I have Sweet. a family member and I know he, if I'm gifted, I know he's just as gifted as I am and whatever right. happened to him, it's a major coercion, yeah. you know, things happening. So I'm off of that. <laughs> I, I don't know if you had any more you wanted to show us. I, that's all my slides for today. And did anyone else have anything they wanted to wrap up? How did you feel about the experience? I'm blown away. I'm absolutely in love and I'm loving it. And I, I finally understand what that chart means now when somebody brings, <laughs> brings that chart out. Good. I'm glad. And again, yeah. if you have any questions, I'm, I'm happy to answer them. Any questions? Uh -huh. I, I have one question. As we're moving through the plasma belt, in, yeah. in the, how is that affecting... <clears throat> the earth the, our whole solar system um and how does it affect the um the human resonance and and all of the planetary systems actually well i've heard the same theory that there is that plasma belt from the galactic center that we're sort of going through and that was why i made the study was to be like okay if this thing's real then i should watch it stimulate us more on all the charts all charts should be stimulated more and has that happened? I would say I've noticed that there's potentially an effort actually, which I didn't consider to manage the sun itself and how it reacts and explodes at us. And I've been watching them shooting missiles or some sort of thing, like an actual object, objects getting shot into the sun. And then Right as during moments where you're like, oh, the sun's pretty time or metal, it could blast its earth facing. There's a storm earth facing, but then I'll see 
<laughs> hours before or after like they they'll shoot and stimulate the sun and then it'll blast in another direction and stuff so but i also will watch from the charts i showed you or the satellite i can see waves of energy hitting the sun as if it's plowing through water and you can see like waves splashing from the corona backward towards us as if it's hitting something so that's been really cool to watch too as some evidence on that I don't have any data about watching the atmosphere temperatures or changes of the other planets. Um, that'd be cool. But I have read that that is potentially happening and that atmosphere is growing and building on it, on planets and so on. So it could just be, depending on how large this band is, this plasma band, it could be like that Goldilocks zone or something of life, an extended period of time where we have more ability for life and advancement. And then that wave or that arm of the galaxy will move away or will move through that arm and we'll experience some sort of dark ages again, potentially, or more vulnerability. But the idea of there being more light available, more photons in a, just like a cube and any time from when I was born versus what I'm going to go into adulthood with was very interesting. And I was curious how that was going to look and how people were going to survive it. I was just really fascinated how we were going to live through such an environmental shift concept. And do we go through this every lifetime? Like this is, is this just an earth experience? Like, is this an earth school thing that I'm tapping into that everybody fears these cycles or is the cycle even there? And I was curious if it was there and conceptually our whole universe I've noticed it seems like we are almost in a video game that someone is coding and making but you can push your hand out of that bubble that hologram and you can push your perspective outside and look at the being creating this one and be like okay and be moved beyond and look at the other bubbles and look at the other creations and geometries like Metatron is one that comes up a ton and that's who I almost picture as like an architect overneath over a top of a hologram but there's other architects and there's other holograms and there's other universes and so on and somehow they all talk to each other and seem to be able to translate messages I'm just in the pursuit of learning or conceptualizing that again because I see it in my third eye sometimes but not even to the extent I know some people have witnessed it especially if they've engaged with anything like dmt like raw dmt or something like that where they're just getting blown right out of their bodies and having a near-death experience basically i haven't had one that intense but i have had a few near-death experiences and a few shamanic experiences that have helped me expand my ability to perceive just even like i said the structure of all of this it's been fascinating so i just don't want people to get stuck in this structure or get led astray like by some abusive shepherd you know what I'm saying? I guess that's sort of like the angelic way. And that's sort of what Christ, I assume, came or existed for was to be that pillar of comparison or like a pure photon or something where we could correct our environment and continue to live instead of get sloughed off like some dead cell, like our little experiment or whatever. There was There is attempts to save it and re revitalize this realm, I feel like. And I've just been kind of looking for the sources of dis disorder like a doctor would, I guess. So I think the photon belt could be a sense of disorder for those who are trying to control nature. Otherwise, if you can be with nature, then you should probably be, be able to mutate with this extra light, I thought. So it seems like it's working. You feel like it's working. Yeah. <laughs>